Um, we'll get started today. So hi everyone from uh, the Seville College of Business here at University Park. We're really excited to talk to the students at the Beaver campus today. So I hope your day is going well. We've got a lot of different things that we're going to do today. So just bear with us as this is our pilot version of the remote visit that we're doing. Um, but my name is Sherry Rice. I do work in the Smeal Business Career Center here at University Park um, and really excited to um, work with all of these students to really help them be able to understand what all they can be doing now in order to set themselves up for success in their job and internship search process. I do have a co-presenter with me. Um, so uh, my colleague Ashley Rippey will be doing the second half of the career presentation. I don't know if Ashley, if you wanted to say hello. Hi everyone, good afternoon. Looking forward to chatting with you today. All right, awesome. So I'll be doing um, a bit of the beginning part of the presentation. Ashley will be taking over towards the end. Um, but then we do actually have a couple of guests with us who will also be providing some insight on the um, career search process, um, but also some international programs. So we do have an alum with us uh, named Tony, who will be chatting about his perspective as he was a change of campus student. Um, and he has some family members that are currently or were a change of campus. So moving forward, this is a bit of the overview for today. Um, so we are going to, one of the biggest things we're going to be talking about are kind of the top career planning tips for all of you to be able to start thinking about what can I be doing now in order to set myself up for success and then what can I be prepared for when I do get to um, the SNEAL campus whenever you're here at University Park. We'll be then talking about how to maximize, again, your first and second year while you're at your campus. We'll be going through a lot of the resources that are available to you, whether you're on your Beaver campus or whether you're here at SNEAL. Um, we're gonna hear from the alumni perspective and then learn about the SNEAL International Programs Office. Um, so just to get started so that all the students are aware, um, if you would like to communicate with the SNEAL Business Career Center, we are actually accessible to all campus students. Um, so if you ever do have questions and you would like to reach out to um, our office, we are available, available for remote appointments. So you can access us at any time if you do have questions. So the first things we'll do is we're going to talk about the top career planning tips for um, the change of campus students who are planning on attending SNEAL after their sophomore year. Um, so these five things are the are kind of the big ticket items that we're going to be discussing today. Um, so we're going to kind of go through them um, one slide per. Um, if there are questions, please do ask. I know Brenda is kind of monitoring the room. So if um, there's one of the, if there is a question, please use the chat feature and we will definitely respond to that um, as soon as we see it. Um, if there are questions, please, please do ask. Because again, if you have it, other students probably also do have that same question. Um, so the first thing we'll be doing today is we we'll talking about Nittany Lion Careers, which is Penn State's internal um, career management system. It has a lot of different functions through it, but as a Penn State student, regardless of the campus you're on, you do have access to that. And we're going to talk about what that looks like. We're then going to talk a little bit about an online career course that you can enroll in um, to make sure you're staying on track to make sure you're successful in the career direction that you want to go into. Um, we're going to talk to you a little bit about how to craft a SNEAL resume. Um, we do have a couple of guidelines that we like our students to follow just to make it easier for the employers. So we'll kind of go through some of those tips. Um, I will then be passing it off on to my colleague. who will be talking about how to meet with um, someone from the Business Career Center or someone from your campus as you do have a career service office at your campus and then understanding exploring all of the career fairs and events um, to help you be successful. So to get us started, we're going to talk a little bit about Nittany Lion Careers. So this is an online plat platform, if you aren't aware, that is available to all Penn State students that houses um, where you can see different career fairs, what employers are going to those career fairs. It's a job posting system. Um, so that's where most of our students do use it. So you'll be able to see full-time positions, internships, also underclassmen um, opportunities. So you'll be able to see externships or conferences. Those are typically available to first year and sophomore students. Um, they typically have employers putting those events on for students when they're not quite ready for a full internship. So that's why they're kind of designed for that underclassmen realm. So you can get an idea of what that company is all about without necessarily doing a full-blown internship. 
those um, will be posted in the system. In addition to, like I said, the internship and co-op positions, you can see all different kinds of career events. They can be career events that are on your campus. They can be career events that are at University Park. Many of those career events are going to be employer facing. Um, so here at University Park, if it is an event that's open to SNEAL students, um, it is available then to SNEAL tracking students and DUS tracking SNEAL. So if you happen to be in the area or you'd like to drive down, you're more than able to do that. So you can see all of those events in addition to all of the ones that are on your campus. And then you can also schedule a career coaching appointment through this system. Um, so this is a really great way if you'd like to um, contact us individually, you can actually make an appointment through the system. Um, and that's where you'll be able to get an appointment with the Smeal Business Career Center or the general career services staff at your own um, campus. And then finally, one thing that's really exciting that this platform does is you can actually get scheduled for interviews um, on the platform. So in the job posting system, there are some employers who actually interview on campus um, for students. And so if you apply to that position, you might be able to then get an in-person interview on your campus or potentially even virtually through our campus. Or if you wanted to travel to University Park, you could do that as well. Um, but it's a really great opportunity that you don't necessarily get um, outside of college when employers are actually coming to you to interview. Um, so I think that's something unique about that platform that you won't necessarily see somewhere else. So that's a little bit about Nittany Lion Careers. Um, one of the biggest things you have to do is when you do log in for the first time, you will have to sign a user agreement. Um, basically that user agreement is saying that you're going to be ethical in your job search process. Um, you will go forward with caution, understand that there potentially might be a scam. So you need to make sure that you follow all the steps forward to make sure that it is a legitimate organization. Um, but really it's to showcase that we're gonna put our best forth effort into providing you the best opportunities available and for you to also then go about the process ethically as well. So in addition to Nittany Lion Careers, which again is probably one of the biggest resources to take away from this presentation because that's where so many of the career components are housed. Um, another really great resource for you, especially if you're planning on tracking into SNEAL, is actually our website. Um, so our website has a ton of information on it. Um, it does link out to Nittany Lion Careers if you don't necessarily remember how to get to that link. Um, you can find it on our website. But the biggest thing that about this website that I really like is it really does host a lot of different resources that are available to you to be able to access to make sure you're staying on track with your job and internship search process. All of the career events are posted on there. You can see exactly dates, time, location, all of those different things. Um, but we also do a lot of resources that involve how do I actually write my resume? What are some interviewing tips? Where, where are Penn State students actually going? What are the hiring statistics? What kinds of companies are they going to? What are the salaries they have? Um, there's also lots of videos that can help you in preparing for internships, or sorry, for interviews, getting your resume around, cover letters, career fairs. Um, so if you ever have any questions on anything career oriented, we probably have the resource for you. I always say this is really great to have and understand if you're trying to get ready for the career fair and it's 11 o'clock at night, no one in the career office is probably available as they're probably sleeping. Um, so our website does a really great job of giving you that information on demand when you need it. Uh, we also do have a YouTube channel that you can access from this website. And that has a whole host of pre-recorded workshops and videos on lots of different professional development topics to help you get career ready. Um, and then finally, the last thing that our website does is it does host um, the site where you can see all of the SNEAL student organizations. Um, so one thing that we're going to talk a little bit later um, with my colleague Ashley is getting involved when you get to SNEAL in addition to being involved at your campus um, is we do have organizations that are specifically um, within SNEAL, about 40 student organizations, a little bit more than that, and they tend to have some sort of business focus. They might be a major focus, um, you know, it's, which is probably the bulk of them. There's also business fraternities or service organizations. So there are a lot of different ways to get involved within the business realm if you're interested in getting into a student organization that also has a business component to it. They are open to all majors, but you'll find that most of them have SNEAL students in them. So that's where you can go and find what all the organizations are, who the contact information is. So if you are planning on coming to University Park in the fall, you can even start to touch base with some of their, their leadership within that organization. 
Okay. All right. Let's move on a little bit as another really great resource for you is going to be what we have here um, available to you actually now um, is an online career course. Um, BA 297 is an online one credit career course where you can actually learn all of the steps throughout the recruiting process. We say it kind of takes you from the beginning of when you're starting to think about how do I start to, you know, even look at what employers I'm interested in, what industries do I want to go into, all the way from you have an offer, you've accepted, how do I actually transition into the workplace? Um, so as you see on the left here, those are all of the different topics that we do cover, um, but mainly a lot of the topics will be surrounding how do I engage, how do I engage with employers at every step of the process? So how will I engage with them at a career fair? How will I write my resume, my cover letter? How will I engage with them during an interview? Um, how will I network with those employers? How will I identify whether they fit within my values? So there's a lot of really great components within this course that are very practical and you're going to need to do regardless of whether you take the class or not. This just helps to structure it. So you have a plan and you start actually taking those steps proactively instead of thinking about them after. This is a course that's available to all campus students. It is online, so again, you can access it from anywhere. Um, it's held in both the fall and the spring, um, exclusively, again, like I said, for campus students that are in their first or their second year. Um, there is no live meeting time, so you can actually do this course when it fits with your schedule, um, which I think is really, really great as a lot of the weekly um, to-dos are recorded videos from our actual corporate partners who are telling you what they want from candidates to make sure they're successful. Um, there are a lot of hands-on assignments where you will actually have to do things that are needed within the recruiting process, such as we require you to write a resume, we require you to go do a mock interview. So things that you'll be needing to do to find that internship, but we just kind of set a timeline to that. Um, this is a course that's sponsored by one of our corporate partners, Kohl's. We're very excited about that. Um, you know, without Kohl's, we would not be able to have this course. So again, it just shows to show you that the employers really do value this class as they're, they're sponsoring it. And then each week is actually all of the lessons are presented from our corporate partners, which are employers who are um, invested in making sure that the Penn State students can really be successful within their companies. Um, this is a course that if you're interested in doing it for the fall at this point, as the course is currently going on in the spring, you would need to email that web, the, that Smeal Careers email address in order to register for the fall schedule, sorry, for the fall um, class. So when you're thinking about your schedule, um, just have this in the back of your mind that this is a really great opportunity to really break down each of the components of the recruiting process and tangible steps for you to make sure you're ready and set up for success. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is actually one of those things that we do kind of emphasize a lot within BA 297, but it is one of the things that we have the bulk of our students come see us for is the resume. So the resume is probably one of the most important pieces of paper, most important documents that you're going to have within the recruiting process, as it's typically the first thing that recruiters are going to see that really showcase who you are as a candidate, what, you know, skills, qualities, and attributes you have, what accomplishments you've been able to do during your time at Penn State. Um, so it's a really great way to really showcase who you are in a summarized version. But it is also important because recruiters do not look at the resume very long. So we wanna make sure that you have the resume designed in a way that's gonna be really easy for those recruiters to see everything they need to in a very quick fashion. So we do have a lot of information on how to kind of set up the resume um, in a way that we see employers really find easy um, and they really think that, you know, it's a great way to kind of pull out key content in the best way possible. Um, so as you see on the left, this is kind of a sample of what our students' resumes tend to look like. Um, this is potentially, can be tricky to get started on this. So we actually do have a lot of resources on our website to kind of help you get started. So we do have an entire packet on the website that walks through tips, tricks, samples, different things that you should be aware of, how to get started on writing your bullet points, what are good action words to use, um, you know, what, what, are they really, what are employers really trying to get out of those bullet points. So definitely want to take a look at that packet. On our website, we also have a downloadable format. As we know, many students struggle with trying to get the format set up in the correct way. 
So we've tried to make it easier and just providing that format so you can actually access that and download it to your own computer from our website. Um, it is just a plain Word document, so it's completely editable. There's nothing that would be, you know, stuck in the way that it is. Um, so again, something that you can really make your own. In addition to those couple of things, we also do have some videos and different handouts on there to again really showcase what is it that an employer is looking for in a resume. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the pieces of that as that would take up this entire session, uh, but if you do have individual questions on your resume, you should definitely get a resume review. Um, you can do that a couple of different ways. You do have a campus staff member who would definitely be willing and happy to see you and look over your resume. Brenda is there um, and always willing and exciting to meet with students. Um, you can also meet with our staff. Um, again, you can schedule that through Nittany Lion Careers and you can do that virtually or in person. So you would, if you want to do it virtually, you would just send over your resume in a PDF when you apply, um, or sorry, when you request the appointment and then during the appointment, it would probably potentially be like maybe a Zoom meeting or a phone call, whatever kind of makes you as a student feel comfortable. And we'd be able to kind of go through the resume in all the necessary ways to kind of help um, improve that resume stand out. Um, and then additionally, you can also have resume reviews during the one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions during the visit. So if anyone there does want a little bit of a quick resume review or how to get started, um, you can definitely do that later today as we will be doing one-on-one -on -one career, so career coaching sessions pretty much right after this session. Um, you will have the first hour with Ashley Rippey and then the second hour with me. So again, um, if you have individual questions, please do, do see us. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Ashley, and she's going to take it over from here. Thanks, Sherry. So first, I wanted to start by reiterating something that Sherry had already said, which is definitely use your campus career service contacts. I know some of you are coming to the end of your sophomore year and may think, you know, I'll just put this off and I'll wait until I start SMEAL here for my junior year. And that's really not a wise idea. You wanna use the resources you have now. So I highly recommend that you meet with Brenda. She can help with the obvious, which would be resume, which we just talked about. But I would encourage you to use her and use us in the future for all things related to career. I've joked with students that if you wanted to practice your handshake, you can do that. If you wanted to check on your professional dress, we could do that for you. Salary negotiation, that's something that's a little bit down the line, but really if you think about all the potential topics that we could discuss, we could handle 99.99% of them here, but also at your Beaver campus. So please do connect with Brenda before you transition. I promise you, especially because we have a career fair here for this coming fall, the second or third week of the semester. If you don't meet with Brenda now, it is likely that you won't have your ducks in a row by the time you get here for that career fair. So really important thing. And Sherry, could you advance the slide? Oh, yes. Thank you. I, I want to talk a little bit about this, and this is a great point too. I think a lot of students, whether they're at Beaver or they're at SMEAL or they're here at the College of Communications, I know when I was a student at Penn State, my idea of the job search process was I'm going to see a job I want, I'm going to have my resume ready, and I'm going to submit the application, and they're going to see how wonderful I am and ask me for an interview, and I'm going to get the job. And that's not really how it works, especially today. I call this a game. So how you get the job or the internship, it's a lot more complex than that, which is why it's so important that we start sooner rather than later with this process of having our ducks in a row, but that we're also thinking about what we look like as a holistic applicant and how we're packaging the value that we bring to the employer. So right now, the things that you could be doing in addition to meeting with Brenda is gathering some intelligence. What types of companies do you want to work for? If we can't identify a company, is there at least an industry? Maybe you want to be in retail or sports, for example, or maybe you have a better idea of the type of function you want to provide, which would be something like consulting or auditing. There has to be some idea of direction or if you don't have a direction, then what are Penn State alum maybe doing who graduated with your major? Let's say it's supply chain. You can access LinkedIn and see what supply chain majors are doing, and that might give you an idea of what the potential career paths are. 
I would caution to say that you really can do anything you want, regardless of your major, but at least that will give you some idea. Informational interviews are also a great way to gather some intelligence. All informational interviews are is basically chatting with someone over the phone or in person to say, how did you get to where you are? What do you like about being there? What do you not like about being where you are? What advice would you have for me? And then over time, the purpose of that relationship could actually grow and change. And you might actually find yourself a mentor, an advocate, someone who might reach out and build some additional networks for you. So there's great value in doing that and doing that early. It's also really important to put a face to a name in networking events, going to info sessions, et cetera. So I'm not really privy to all the things that Beaver is doing on campus and the employers that are coming to campus. Of course, I'm very aware of what SMEAL is doing. When you come here to SMEAL, it's really important that if you want to work for KPMG, for example, that every time KPMG is on campus, you're going up and introducing yourself to KPMG. It doesn't matter if they're handing out free Chick-fil-A sandwiches, which they do pretty frequently, and we like that, or if they're doing a formal info session, a case competition, they're at a career fair, it's really important to be there. Because part of this game, KPMG and companies like them, they're using something called applicant tracking systems and they're tracking every move you make with the company. So if you do engage with them when they're handing out that Chick-fil-A and they have their case competition and their info session, you now have three interactions with them before you apply. So in comparison to someone who's just applying on the World Wide Web and coming out of the dark, you have three legs up or three points of contact. So if I'm thinking about this from a game standpoint, I always joke, if you're thinking about collecting flags and whoever at the end of the game has the most flags wins, your interactions are a way to collect those flags. So it's really important that you pay attention to the events that are happening. Other things that you can be doing right now is enhancing your professionalism and experience and also having your documents ready. So the resume is obviously a huge part of that. That would be the primary one I would think to have ready, but your LinkedIn, especially if you are going to utilize that to do those informational interviews is a really important, we'll call it a document or a job application piece to have ready. And then the experience piece we'll talk about here in a moment. And then yes, the remainder of the application process is apply, 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 repeat, interview, perhaps take some assessments as part of the interview process, and then finally negotiate and make a decision. But if we focus on that top arrow right now, going into the fall, you'll be very well prepared. So I want to talk a little bit about the experience piece. Sherry did mention the SNEAL student organizations, and obviously there are organizations at your campus as well. If you are a freshman right now at Beaver, please do start to think about doing student organizations if you haven't already. If you're a sophomore and you've not joined, I probably wouldn't at this point jump into a student organization because all you're really going to have to say probably by May when the semester ends is that you were a member. And being a member, being a passive person sitting in the back of the room just attending meetings is not necessarily going to build any quality on your resume at this point, although it will add to quantity. It really is more important to have those quality experiences. And that means having committee chair positions, whether that's elected or not. It could be stepping up for projects. It could be volunteering and leading a project. It's really important to start building those experiences. Case competitions as well, if there are any at the Beaver campus before the spring semester closes, are really great ways to gain some company exposure and develop skills like thinking on your feet, communication, even some visual design skills that are really important in the business world. So I encourage you to think about how do I build these quality experiences that I can reflect on the transferable skills I'm building. If you think about transitioning to SNEAL then, it's really important as soon as you get here to start getting into those organizations, maybe picking a handful to check out, not necessarily continue engaging in that entire handful, but really refine from there which of these organizations is best going to meet my goals, help me develop the networks and the skills that I need to develop, and then what leadership positions can I build here so that I can stand out in the application process. And just a couple of the resources here before I get ready to toss this back to Sherry and hand it over to our next presenter. 
I would encourage you to think about the SNEAL Alumni Mentor Program. You are eligible to do that as a campus student and then also as you transition here. There is a rolling application process where they actually match you with a SNEAL alum based off of your interest. It's a really robust program. I believe this year they have three different mentors and the mentors are trained and you are actually trained as a mentee so you know how to really get the most out of that program. So if you're interested, you can connect with Sherry or I. Also, I'm a big Googler. If you Google SNEAL Alumni Mentor Program, the application will come up. Also, I would mention, since we've already sort of chatted about the student organizations, the Undergraduate Career Service Interns is the next resource I'm going to mention. So we have Undergraduate Career Service Interns here who are great resources for you to meet with once you come here on campus. If you cannot, for some reason, get an appointment with our team right before the career fairs, you can do a drop-in with our Undergraduate Career Service Interns. They are very well trained. Some of them have been here are graduating some seniors this year who have been here all four years. So they're really great resources. Uh, the student organizations we mentioned, and so the last resource I wanted to highlight, and, and this will kind of help us transition well, is the SNEAL Office of International Programs. So in addition to Penn State having their own Office of Global Programs, SNEAL has their own resource. And I will toss it back to Sherry now so she can introduce them. Sorry, well, I was muted as I was talking. Thanks, Ashley. Um, just one more quick thing. Uh, we actually do have um, a specific person in our office named Maria Walls, and she is the campus, the SNEAL Campus Career Coordinator. Um, so she will be the, your main point of contact. Um, she, her, her role is to ensure that the students at the campuses know and understand the resources they have available to them at that campus and here at SNEAL to make sure they can make a successful transition um, from their campus to SNEAL, um, ensuring that, you know, that when they get here as a junior, they're ready to go for that job and internship search process. Again, you can schedule with an appointment with her through Nittany Lion Careers. Um, and then for us, um, we'll be meeting on those one-on-ones today. Maria is kind of listening in. Maria is new to the office. Um, so she's doing more of an observation today, but moving forward, she will be your main contact. Okay, um, and then also just so you are aware, um, if you ever do have um, course questions, ah, if you ever do have um, course questions regarding SNEAL, um, we do have a contact, his name is Matt, and I'm going to say his last name wrong, Mignonia, something like that. I think you're right, Sherry, Mignonia, very good. Yeah. I know, I was like, oh, we're going to see. Um, he actually is a liaison. He's here housed in University Park. Um, he is a SNEAL advisor, but he is a liaison to Beaver to ensure that the students who are transitioning from Beaver to SNEAL understand all of the courses and the GPA requirements that are necessary to graduate on time with the degree that they want to. So if you do ever have course questions, you would go to Matt. Um, sometimes it can be confusing between the career office and the advising office. So if it has to do with your curriculum and your classes and grades and GPA, that's all going to be Matt. Um, if, if it has to do with jobs, internships, and employers, that's going to be our office. So just wanted to make that distinguish as that sometimes can be a little tricky. All right. Um, this is just, again, so you can get a, a nice little visual of our office. Um, since I know you're not necessarily here, this is just a snapshot of our office here at the University Park and again our website. Um, so moving forward from that, I do want to allow some time for our guests to speak. We're very excited today. We have an alum. Um, his name is Tony and he is currently a retired executive um, and he wanted to kind of talk a little bit about his experiences, um, you know, what his tradition was like coming from his campus to University Park. Um, to really just help any of you with any kind of guidance and just tips and tricks before getting there as we know it can be an overwhelming process. So at this point I'm going to pass it over to Tony. Good afternoon everybody. Um, I've been, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to talk to, to you all today. Um, just give you a little background. I am a, a 1978 graduate at, at, uh, of, of Penn State and um, so and I did a transfer from what at that time was the McKeesport campus, I believe it's Greater Atlanta, to uh, to University Park after my sophomore year. 
Uh, I also have uh, two children of my own who are Penn State, um, had, had spent some time at Penn State, and, and one of them was also a, a, a Commonwealth uh, campus uh, transfer. And then I have two uh, stepchildren right now who are, are uh, at University Park. So um, I bleed blue and white, so as does many of my family. Uh, it, just a little bit of background it, 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 and experience from my time, uh, in my time and, and my older son's time who were uh, transfers from Commonwealth campuses. I, I can't emphasize enough uh, the, the message of, of, you know, take advantage of everything and be totally ready when that time comes that you make that move to University Park. There's going to be a lot of transition and, and a lot of anxiety, perhaps, on your part. Uh, and the best, my experience, the best way to address anxiety is, is for just being prepared and, and having a plan. And, and I think that's really critical uh, when you make this, this move. And, and by all means, keep track of all the email addresses and such that you've received here because um, all the help that you can get is really important. The university makes so many resources available to you to help the transition and help you be successful as you proceed through your college career into your professional career. Um, it, it, it's, it's more than there was there whenever I was a transition in transition. I just think it's really important that, that you all think about um, leaning on those resources because they are very valuable and, and, and you'll, you'll really come to appreciate them as you move forward. Um, I know, you know, my, my son, when he made the move, it was really overwhelming and, and actually eventually he, he didn't finish his, his career at, at Penn State and part of it was that, but, but, you know, my other children have loved it there. I loved it there. It was, you know, as I said, it's a, it's a little bit, you just have to be prepared for it. And, and, um, uh, I think that's, that's really important. Um, I think the other things that, that, that are important is, is be ready for that time when you get up there and there's career fairs. Those career fairs are, are, uh, um, are, are, are instrumental in, in, in your future. I think it is very necessary to, to kind of just be ready for them, be, be prepared, use the resources that are available for you uh, to, get, to get ready for them. Um, the important things I think uh, involve the networking to the extent that you network. Uh, it's, it's, it's not only important now, I would emphasize it's, it's important for the rest of your career. Um, and, and networking kind of sounds a little bit overwhelming, but it's but it really isn't. It's it's just maintaining friendships and and connections that you made all the way through people you spend time in class with today, and or work in, in team projects with today uh, are are networking opportunities that you you need to just maintain because it'll become important as you, as you move forward in in in, in time. So um, I think that's important. I I just again I just emphasize. Uh, you know, don't procrastinate, don't be overwhelmed, use the resources that are made available to you and, and, uh, and, and, and just, just uh, move forward and, and have confidence because the one thing is you are prepared, uh, you know, thinking about those, those key points about, you know, being, being well educated, well, if the university takes care of that and you wouldn't be at Penn State if you didn't think you were being well educated. I'll also say that that um, employers love Penn State. Uh, my my younger son uh, works for PwC. He's actually in the recruiting uh, team that comes to Penn State because he, he 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 very much loved the university. So he comes back several times a year. Um, you know, we talk about things, and 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 yeah, he always emphasizes that um, they want they are looking for the best and the brightest. So they're as interested in you as you are in them. Um, he, he, he states they like to keep in touch with folks that, you know, they, get, they meet. So even if it doesn't seem, to, to reiterate the point of earlier, even if they're giving away sandwiches on campus, go there, 
make yourself known and, and so that you can create a dialogue and that dialogue will make it easier for you as you go forward because you'll have a certain level of comfort because you will know the people there and, and, and they'll know you. So I think that's, that's also something that's very important. So uh, leadership positions, the university makes a lot of organizations uh, available to you. Um, take advantage of it uh, and, and get some kind of leadership uh, opportunity. Don't be concerned that it's maybe not a business related organization. It's any organization. It's where you have your passion. If you've got a passion for something outdoors, then be part of the organization, the outdoors organization. And if you're passionate about it, you're more likely to take a leadership role in that organization. And that's really what the uh, employer is looking for. They're looking for that, that rounded person who is going to be a leader who's going to come in and make a difference in their organization. So I think, you know, showing that through a leadership position and some, some, uh, some organization that you're really passionate about is really important. So, uh, and, and as I said, just keep getting in front of people. That's, 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 that's critical. Uh, um, I'm available if anybody has any questions, um, you know, now or later. I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, and you know, I've, I've had some, some Penn State students reach out to me in that way, and if you, if you uh, want to do that, um, I'm very open to that. I, you know, really, um, since, I'd be, since I'm kind of semi-retired, I've uh, made a decision in the last year to, to, to get back involved in the alumni organization because I, I truly enjoy the interactions with the students, and, and I think there's a lot of benefit to, uh, to talking to people who have done it before and been successful. Thanks, Tony. Is that everything? Um, yeah, I think so. I think, um, um, that, yeah, would also be another issue is that relevant experience in, in the internships, as y'all talked about. Um, you know, I had an internship uh, when I was in Penn State, and, and my, uh, my younger son, Ryan, had an internship at PwC, which, which resulted in a, in a, uh, in a, uh, a full-time position. And I think, uh, again, a university does a great job of making internships available and, you know, creating the relationships with the firms and the companies who come there. And it's, you can't overemphasize the fact that companies like Penn State, it is, it is a, uh, a real um, resource for or a source of, of good people for the, for the employers. Tony, is that everything then at this point? Yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you so much, Tony. Um, I think that was really great to get that perspective from um, you as an alum, and thank you for being willing to, um, you know, talk to the students further um, via LinkedIn. Um, if you are a student, I think that's a really great tool to begin utilizing. There are a lot of great connections that you can make on LinkedIn, and it's not just getting connected, it's having the conversation on LinkedIn. Um, that's really where you're going to make the meaningful relationship building. Um, so just saying you have a connection on LinkedIn isn't quite enough, but it's really engaging in that conversation and chatting with Tony about any maybe individual questions you have about career search, Penn State, um, whatever it might be, life questions, um, you know, that's, that's where you can really have that opportunity to engage. So thank you so much, Tony. Um, now that we, oh, now that we're going to move a little bit forward over and kind of switch gears back into the presentation. And we're gonna have the International Programs Office. Um, if I can get this to work right, let me just move this really quick. Okay, all right. Can everyone see my screen again? So hopefully you can. We're gonna move this, shift this over to um, the SMEAL um, International Programs Office. And they're gonna talk a little bit about who they are and um, the, all the opportunities you can have within their office. So. Ellie, I'm going to pass it off over to you. Ellie, can...
Ellie, can you hear us? Ellie, we can't hear you. I mean, I can't hear you. Ellie, are you, are you there, Ellie? Sure, it doesn't look like Ellie is in the room now. I can see, it says she's here. I can see her. No. Oh. Okay. Um, well, I guess if we, um, we aren't sure what's happening there, and I, I'm not sure, I can't hear her. So, um, Joe will kind of run through her slides um, as best we can. Um, can you hear me now, Sherry? Oh, there's Ellie. Hi, how are you? Great. I'm just playing with, I have multiple speakers here. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, uh, yeah. Um, if you can hear me, I'm good to go. Yes, we can hear you. So if you are good to go, feel free to get started whenever you're ready. Perfect. Thanks. So my name is Elizabeth Labrine. I go by Ellie. I'm one of three study abroad advisors in the SMEAL Office of International Programs, and our office is headed by Associate Dean Jeff Sharp. Um, one thing you might want to know is that we are available to take phone appointments with uh, students at other campuses other than UP. And so if you are a student who is tracking to change to University Park in uh, the Samil College of Business, you are welcome now, even if you're in BA or DUS status, to make an appointment with us online to talk about any of your study abroad plans and how study abroad might fit in. Do you want to switch the slide? One of the important things to think about when you're thinking about uh, a SMEAL, uh, if you want to study abroad and you are a SMEAL business major, is that because of the entrance to major process, which I think most of you are pretty familiar with at this point, the sequencing of the courses really is meant to be finished in your freshman and sophomore year. And for that reason, most SMEAL majors study abroad in the fall or spring semester of their junior or senior year after they've entered a SMEAL major. There are some cases, if you're really ahead on your entrance to majors, that you can petition or talk directly with our office about if you would be a good candidate to study abroad in spring of your sophomore year. But that would mean that you're freshman now and planning to apply by this May 1st deadline to be studying abroad the following spring. So if you have any questions about that or you find any of that confusing, of course, that is your opportunity to give us a call and schedule a phone appointment and we can look at your particular situation. Earlier semesters are not allowed uh, if you are planning a SMEAL um, major. However, summer is wide open, so you're free to go abroad any summer, so after your first year or second year or later. And that might be a good option if actually you've exhausted a lot of your gen eds or electives that are normally taken abroad. Um, then that those programs are shorter anywhere from three weeks, three credits, or six weeks, six credits. If you're thinking about a risk management or actuarial science major, you really only can consider summer, summer abroad because of the sequencing of semester courses doesn't allow for that in that particular major option. Also, we have some faculty-led summer programs, so that's a really neat opportunity for you to make a connection with a faculty member in SMEAL while you're studying abroad. And so I can also talk to you about those specific programs if you were to set up a phone meeting. Right now, the next possible deadline is if you're planning, um, say mostly those of you who are uh, sophomores right now, if you're thinking that you do wanna study abroad in spring of your junior year, you should be scheduling an appointment with us. And at the top of the screen there, that's an actually an interactive link to go to schedule an appointment with SMEAL Office of International Programs. So I do encourage you to give us a uh, schedule that appointment and we can talk over the phone. 
about where you want to go and what the application process is like, uh, scholarships that are available, and kind of how will this fit into your overall academic plan to see if this is an option, right? So at no point does that commit you to this, but if it's something that you are thinking you're interested in and you want to find more information, then we are more than happy to meet with you to go through those details. The last thing that's associated with studying abroad in the Smeal College of Business is the international business minor. My favorite minor because you actually are required to study abroad for six weeks in order to achieve this minor. Uh, so there's a couple of prescribed SMEAL courses you'll see at the top. You have to do any of those for a SMEAL major. You're already planning on that. A lot of them you're already completing an entrance to major process. So really the latter part, the supporting courses are the things that we will help you plan on. You'll do two courses, international business courses, either at your campus or at University Park. Uh, you will need to study abroad for a minimum of six weeks, six credits consecutive, so that could be part of a semester program or a six week, six credit summer program. And then you'll have six more credits of supporting courses and that really varies by location and whether you're planning summer or semester. So again, we can help you look at how you would meet those requirements. There are only certain programs that are eligible to earn um, courses towards the minor. And so uh, again, we would just refer you to our website and go to the choosing a program page uh, and or schedule an appointment. And I know I've said that multiple times, but I really do encourage you. It's, it can be kind of a complicated process, although it can be pretty exciting too. So we're here to help you with that. And I do encourage you to schedule an appointment. So thanks again for your time. And thank you, Sherry, for including us in your presentation. Thanks. Um, so yes, yeah, so we're really excited to be able to um, have Kelly and her team available to all students across all of the different Commonwealth campuses. I think studying abroad is a really great opportunity um, that if I were back in college, I wish I would have done. It's something I did not do. Um, I think you do learn a lot about yourself um, and, and who you are, and it's a really great way to even tie that into potential, you know, how you want to kind of uh, form your career as well. So I think that's something that usually can really help you in that track in addition to kind of a unique experience. Um, so thanks, Ellie. Um, at this time, that is the presentation that we have. Are there any 